You can see Don Rickles in person at uh, Harrah's in Lake Tahoe on January 16th to 18th and at the Desert Inn in Las Vegas, January 23rd to 25th. And you can enjoy John Rickles live and in person tonight here on CBS. And thank you for coming over and thank you for attending the party tonight. I know you had a wonderful time. I saw you there at the, uh, at the, uh, at the bar. Wouldn't miss it. One of the greatest parties in the world. <laughs> Bonnie Hunt, myself, and little Richard, who was serving the people. <laughs> Fantastic party. I mean, and everybody else was just people in bad suits walking around going, uh, Tom Snyder? Well, who was he? <laughs> and the guy with the hors d'oeuvres, a cracker, and that was it. It was a wonderful night. Well, I'm never so... ask me again. I, Please, I, okay, never ask okay. me again. I don't need it. Now, I read that on New Year's Eve this year, you worked for the first time in 40 years at a place that did not serve alcohol. You worked Absolutely. The, the Indian Casino. Mystic Lake. Okay. Wonderful people. Sioux Indians. And I knew they were Sioux because they kept circling the hotel. Uh, <laughs> wife and I wanted to make love, and the whole night was, hi, 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 hi. And, you know, and then the guy came with makeup right by the window, and I figured that there was a gay parade outside. But now, what was it like working for a crowd that had no, you know, usually when you perform, there, uh, there's alcohol being served. Yes, well, there wasn't supposed to be any alcohol, but there was a lot of smiles out there. <laughs> we had Avion. <laughs> And I kept saying, and the guy said to me, we enjoyed. No, we, they're not supposed to have alcohol, and we didn't have any alcohol. Mm -hmm. Wife and I just did memorial songs. <laughs> <laughs> I made love to her that night. We're married 32 years. I understand. And, you know, you don't take a shot at the wife when you're married 32 years. You just circle the bed and go home. <laughs> When you get a chance, ask another question. I'm, I'm going to do that, but I just, I, I'm just curious here. Was it a big crowd at the at the 2,000 people. Really? Two shows. Yeah. 2,000 a show. And they're lovely people. The Sioux Indians are great. They really and are. And what kind of gambling? Do they have the same as in Las Vegas? Yeah, but I, I understand. I wasn't in the casino. I was too busy having Avion water. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they, were, they, they I, don't, I don't think they have uh, craps. Okay. They have, uh, they have everything else, you know. They, yeah, the blackjack and those yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. They have the stuff. It, it's, it's America. Yeah. And, uh, you know. I couldn't stay long because I was going to the George Custer dinner. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> In your Arrow shirt. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll do the funny stuff, Tom. Okay. <laughs> you just lay back and let the kid roll. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> In the Arrow shirt. Let me write, let me write that down. <laughs> Irish guy got off a good one. <laughs> what did you do New Year's Eve? I uh, stayed home. I went to see Titanic, the, the movie Titanic. That's exciting. Now, watch a ship sink on New Year's Eve. <laughs> it was more than a oh, ship sink. You're a real rocket scientist. You, when I, you saw the picture, you, you and Barbara, you loved yeah. the picture. I, I, I did. I did. I love when they're hanging on the railing and he said, take a deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> and his shorts fell off. It was great. <laughs> now, you and Barbara, speaking of you and, you and your wife, you are now moving into a new home after having lived in one house for, what, 27 years? Yeah, hopefully, if our decorator decides it's time to move in. <laughs> <laughs> We've been seven years at the beach. We're living at the beach now in our beach house, mm -hmm. which we have from a lot of jokes. And the beach house is great. We have a lot of sandbags. Believe me, you know, with El Nino, El Nino right, which I right. thought was a Mexican guy. Yeah. Uh, El Nino is fantastic. We have sandbags. If Hitler was still alive, believe me, a direct hit would not kill him. <laughs> We have sandbags all over the place. And how much rain have you had out there at the beach? Uh, we had uh, our share. Yeah. And we sit out there, Norman Jewison's my neighbor, and he keeps leaning over the fence going, I'm Norman Jewison. <laughs> Real annoying guy. Yeah. Yeah. And Robert Ellis Mills on the other side, another director. I'm surrounded by directors. Right, right. They don't give me any work, but it's great. Okay. Sit back, Tom. It's your so show. now, why did you decide to leave the house of 27 years? Well, we got fed up because I, my, what happened was my, my daughter got married, God right. bless her, yeah. and she married a wonderful guy, Ed Mann. My son became a, a wonderful writer for uh, Murphy Brown, and they moved out of the house. And we were walking around, I was going, oh, remember like the Lou Gehrig story? Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Barbara, darling, 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 darling. So the house was too big for just you and Barbara. Are you a detective? <laughs> Fantastic. Deduction, huh? Up, Unbelievable. You're so quick, you scare me. <laughs> Boy, I know you're a long time, but you're getting faster every day. <laughs> Look at this. My leg can't... I'm, I'm so excited how fast you are. So anyway, the house was too big for you, so, you just, right. and so you're building a house. Yes, we, we, we bought a uh -huh. villa. I won't tell you where, because there could be a guy with a mask on. That's right. Look That's right. Us. But we bought a beautiful house, hmm? and hopefully our decorator will finish it so we can live in it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> meanwhile, we're out at the beach, walking up and down, watching the guys with the little, uh, you know, with the dogs. A lot of dogs on the beach. Yeah, yeah. A lot of legs up on the beach. Don't walk on the beach anymore. I mean, they have all these loose dogs. I mean... It's like tiptoe through the tulips. It's murder. <laughs> murder. Just get through the movements, right? That's right. There That's you go. It. Now, you were here last February. Is that when I was? Yeah, and you were talking about your daughter's wedding, which was still coming up. Yeah. You, were, you and Barbara were getting ready for that. Tell, tell us about that. How did that go? 
Well, <clears throat> right now, to be very honest, I'm still paying for the flowers. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it was a large wedding. Yeah, her family, uh, well, his family, Edmund, my, my son-in-law, mm -hmm. his family, they, they chipped in and they bought dessert. Yeah. Uh, well, doesn't the groom's family usually have like a dinner the night before, the yeah, rehearsal dinner? Yeah, they, they were very nice, yeah, you know. Yeah. We went for the whole bundle. I understand. You know? yeah, yeah. They chipped in and said, how about, uh, you know, how about going to, uh, well, you know, maybe the Dan Tanner's, you know, for a bite or yeah. something like that. Okay. You know, they, they didn't want to go But you out. and Barbara went whole hog. Big party, big crowd. Big, big. Yeah. Oh, kidding? And whereabouts was it? At home or at a... No, no. It was in, it was in uh, Lebanon. Uh, <laughs> we rented a hall in Lebanon. No, it was at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Oh, I don't very want to good. give them credit because they charged us. It wasn't free. I understand. And uh, it was good. And the rabbi was there and he wanted a few bucks too. Always, I hate yeah, that. Yeah. See, you Catholics, you don't have that problem. The priest gives you a little cookie and you go away. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, yeah. we have to go for the money. Mm -hmm. We go for the money. You guys go for the spirit of the Santo, don, 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 whatever you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no many padres. Uh, yeah, well, right. hey, don't get that on me. <laughs> <laughs> so the wedding went well and the bride and groom were happy. They're very happy. Very my good. daughter's very happily married, you know, and she's wonderful and my son is very happy. To... Now, he works on uh, Murphy Brown, the yeah, sitcom Murphy Brown. here at CBS. Yeah, he's, he's doing very well. And uh, the storyline is kind of difficult this year. It's yes, about it is. cancer. cancer. And that, right. I give them credit for doing a show like that. And so the writers have a tough time, you know. Uh, but uh, they've produced the. She's uh, Candace Bergen has done a marvelous job. And the writers and. Uh, well, now your son then writes for a show that does do comedy. I mean, they brought comedy into this. this in, into thing. cancer. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm yeah. laughing now. Yeah. That's right. hey, nothing like it, right? Hey, every guy comes up and says, you know, my wife has cancer. <laughs> <laughs> funny, yeah, funny, funny stuff. <laughs> My brother just died of leukemia. <laughs> funny stuff. Funny stuff. <laughs> but you know what I mean. They put a little, they, there's some humor in that show. Yeah, what I'm getting at here, does your son do any writing or has he, has he ever su suggested writing material for his father? No, no. He, no. he, he doesn't take that chance. <laughs> <laughs> he knows that every week he'll get a check no matter what happens. I got you. I got you. <laughs> no, he, no, he's very creative. He would write for me. I, I assume if I approached him, which I never have. He's very talented. Do you have people that write for you, or do you... Do I've you... never, I've, Tommy, it's the truth, I've never had anybody write for me in my entire career. Right. It's always been like what I thought on a little piece of paper. Uh -huh. In those days, we didn't have the cassettes. And right. now I, I tape a show. I have my conductor, Joe Mealy, uh, or Tony O, my road manager, you know, tape something. Sure. And, and, and then I listen to it, and, and I try. And most times, I don't remember it. But, it. but it comes back maybe three shows later. So I never, never wrote down anything in the sense that I had a writer sit with me and I got say, you, or some comedians that, will buy jokes, right. you know? And every night, <clears throat> like you, when you do your monologue, which I always love you, when you do your opening thing, I'm serious, you, you do it great. And I create every show, I would say 5% of my show changes uh, each performance. Mm -hmm. Because how I feel and how the audience, it's the same sure. thing with you and your opening. Sure. It's how the audience is, you have a great audience here, you know. <laughs> a lot of cardboard signs and two guys with earphones going, huh? <laughs> so, you know, it's great. <laughs> Thanks, Don. We, <laughs> we'll continue with Don Rickles, who's appearing at Harris Lake Tahoe the 16th through the 18th, the Desert Inn over in Las Vegas the 23rd through the 25th. The toll for you is up and running, and we'll continue after this message. Uh, back with Don Rickles, here's Charles on the toll-free in Rose Hill, North Carolina. Hi, Charles, and welcome to CBS Late Night. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you? Okay. Okay. Uh, Tom, I always enjoy your program. Thank you, sir. Say hi to Don Rickles. He's waiting to talk with you. Hello, Don. Hello. Uh, Don, uh, I understand you like sports on TV. Very much so. Yes. What, uh, what, do you like ACC basketball? ACC basketball? ACC basketball. <laughs> it's my favorite. Yes, I'm sure it is. <laughs> ACC basketball. I like, the, I like the Lakers and UCLA. Okay, oh, okay, so you like professional? Yeah. Uh, professional. Is this a test? Yes. yes Charles, maybe, maybe we could talk about football since this Sunday is a rather large Sunday yeah. in professional football. And my manager, Elliot Weissman, is a big with rotisserie. You know, you know what rotisserie is? Oh, sure, is. the football yeah, team. No, they the, take baseball. the chicken. Oh, oh, rotisserie chicken. Okay, good. <laughs> Boy, you're fast for a guy uh, your age. Huh? <laughs> Sir. Who, uh, who is it going to be, Green Bay or San Francisco? Well, I don't like to say, but I'll take uh, the Buccaneers. <laughs> Tampa Bay Bucks. No, I, I, it's going to be a tough game, and uh, push or shove, it could go either way. It really could. It sure could. It sure could. Charles, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you... I'm going to go with Green Bay, Don. All okay, right. Charles, good luck, and good, best to the family. 
Hey, Don, I'm a great fan of yours. Been watching you for 25 years now. You son of a gun. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all I right. I his name, and I want to go to his house. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, thank you for calling. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Tom. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye. So do you spend a lot of time watching sports on TV? Well, that's going to cause a divorce. I'm married to Barbara. Oh, it is not. 33 years you're married to Barbara. March will be 33. And I'm a big nut with sports. I've always been a fanatic, a couch potato when it comes to sports. I know you love hockey. Oh. You, guys, you made the, uh, the spots for that. We, we both well, the made. hockey puck, I don't know how, yeah, we did that thing. I don't know how that happened, but I, I, I do enjoy hockey. But my key thing is football and the Dodgers, of course, sure. with yep. and when he was there, and Bill Russell, who I adore, and the Dodgers. So I'm an all-around sports guy. Love the Lakers. Love the Lakers. This season, I, I watch every game. And how is Barbara with you watching TV sports? Is Annoyed. She but she yeah. knows that the jewelry will not come through if she carries on. <laughs> she just sits there and goes, again with the game? Is this, is this going on forever? Oh, I said, well, you won't get the, <laughs> the little earring and the thing. You know. yeah. And, then and how goes, is Newhart now that his show is... Uh, Who? Uh, Bob Newhart. Oh, yes. You know, he's got this show on What's CBS. What's it, Leo and Irving? Something like that, yeah. Well, Al and Lou, something, yeah, yeah. Is he still a... Oh, he's doing great. Bob, Bob's a dear friend. We, we spent Christmas together sang the carols, and then I went home. Oh. <laughs> and uh, he always has us at the house for the holidays. We are very dear. I love him tremendously. I think Leo and George is a good, with, uh, with uh, Judd Hirsch will be very, very received. Uh, hopefully. You know be. what you just did? What? A two-snap. To, to help you get Judd Hirsch. Remember, you, he, it's a two-snap. Can I go on? Yes, you can. Yeah. What are you... Bubbles Johnson or something? Black Dancer? Anyway, we're talking here about, uh, about the new heart and the series. Yeah, Bob's great. The, the, yeah. But let me ask you about your own career as a movie actor. You were in Run Silent, Run Deep with That's Clark right. Gable. I carried Clark Gable. And, or Clark Gable and Burt Lancaster. I carried both of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're dead now, so they can't say anything. But I did carry them both. Burt Lancaster used to come up to me and say, Hi, Don. Are you ready to do the scene? I said, Go away, Burt. Go away. You did not. No, I didn't. I respected Burt. Clark was great. Clark, well, Bert was too, but Clark always used to say to me, you know something, kid? I think you're a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to say, thank you, Clark. <laughs> but it was fun. See, your first picture in the world. Can you imagine doing Run Silent, Run Deep, ever? First time I, I talked to your big turnout here. <laughs> you know, if you, want, if, if you want, I can bring 800 people in here to laugh at all this stuff. You don't know 800 people. Tom. Oh, yes, don't I push it. No. Don't push it, Tom. I'm happy with these three derelicts and the guy standing there with the earphones trying to land planes. Please. I'm happy with this. All right, fine. Oh, turn on. So, uh, your first picture. Yeah, my first picture. And it was Clark Gable. I had to do a screen. I don't know if I said this to you before, but all right. Who, who cares? The, 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 who watches this? So, anyway, so it's 1230 at night. I usually like this with one earphone. Here's the way I watch the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tom Snyder. <clears throat> That's it. But uh, I got to tell you, Lancaster and the thing with Gable, I had to do a screen test. Uh -huh. And it was in Henry Slate, the rest of the soul. I used to work in the Slate Brothers. And in those days, you know, we both, you know, the martinis were coming pretty good. Mm -hmm. And we had to be up there early in the morning. And I had what they call a work light. And I stood on the set, and a voice said, Mr. and I played a sailor in Run Silent Redeem. And a voice said, Mr. Rickles, we're going to do this scene now. And you'll be talking to Mr. Gable. I said, Clark, Clark, Clark Gable going to be there? No, 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 no. There's no Mr. Gable. It's just an actor off stage that'll do the lines with you. And you just say the lines and this voice will answer to you. And I had this work line and I couldn't see anything. It was yeah. doctors. And I went, the men are tired. The ship is ready to sink, sir. What are we going to do? And a voice went, take it down 100 feet and dive, dive, dive. Don't be afraid. Attack, attack. And I went, chat, cut, chat. I started to spit up. Oh, really? It was Gable. <laughs> yeah. I spit up. I couldn't believe it was Clark Gable. And then I met him later, and I found out I was bigger than he was. <laughs> and then you uh, did a lot of television work, too. You did, you did yeah, one for your life with Ben Gazzara. Ben Gazzara, who I also carried. Ben was great. He was great. In those days, he used to, you know, he used to have the trams come at Universal. Oh, yeah, the tours. You, yeah, yeah. you do a scene, and, and, and Ben was, uh, oh, he's, he's still with us, thank God. He's a great actor. And Ben used to do, like, he'd say, Charlie, are you guilty? Guy, on the left is Ben Gazzara. That's Don Rickles talking to Ben Gazzara. Everybody lean out of your wagon and look at Ben Gazzara. And Ben Gazzara, who's a real hot Italian, went, he went crazy, you know. Ben Gazzara! Look at this, I'm working with Chris Kringle. No. 
You're funny. You're genuinely funny. Funny. Hey, if I'm not, would I be on this? Uh, yes, I'd you... be on the show to say it. <laughs> Thanks, Don. We will, we will continue with Don Rickles, who'll be at Harris. Uh, figure it out for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and the Desert Inn. Figure it out for yourself. <laughs> now these messages. <laughs> With Don Rickles, here is Oris in Toledo, Ohio. Hello. Hello. Hello, Oris. Hello. How are Hi, you? Tom. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd like to talk to the hockey puck, please. Uh, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> Get a goal. No, I, some guys can't tell a joke, I know. Yeah. That, that's the question. You have basically been an insult humorist. And sure. I wondered if early in your career, when you're developing this type of thing, you might have insulted the wrong guy and got yourself in some deep doo-doo. No, uh, what is doo-doo? Doo-doo is cocktail. Oh, I thought that was a dessert. Yeah. A little doo-doo. Anyway, uh, I must say, uh, sir, uh, actually, in my beginnings, uh, I cultivated, I was like every other comedian in the sense that I did jokes and, uh, and I could never tell jokes and impressions and I never was too good. And for survival, I started to talk to the audience. Now, the word insult hung on to me for my entire career, which I don't object to because, it, you know, it got my wife a house and it got me a couple of bucks. So, uh, what I'm, what I'm, I don't like to think of it as insult, I like to think of it as a put-on, an exaggeration of all of us. All the things in life that we all are, an exaggerated. What you really do, I think, is verbal caricatures, huh? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, but, but I was stuck with insults, so okay. Yeah. So, w when you say to me about the, the, the insult guy, uh, I, sure, I am that, and that's what I do, but I don't like to think of it as that, and it's certainly not that. My goal is not to... You know, in the intro they wrote for me, they used the word, the merchant of venom, which people used yeah, to Milton use. Yeah, Milton Berle gave me that. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I took it out because I don't see you that way. Thank you. I really don't. Uh, uh, Johnny Carson came up with the line, Mr. Warmth, which, yeah. I, which I adore, yeah. you know. But, I mean, the, the whole idea is, uh, the gain, hey, I couldn't be still working and exist if it was somebody that's hateful. That's not my goal. My yeah. goal is to laugh yeah. at ourselves. Yeah. Hey, I laugh I, at you because look at you. I'm funny. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Pathetic. I didn't, I didn't mean to insult you, Don. I no, no, sir. I, 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 I was just explaining you. my position so you'd know. Yeah, I just love what you do. Thank you very much. You come over to the house for lunch. Okay. What time? Don't uh, push it. Tom, <laughs> would you do, Tom, would you do me a favor? Yes, if I can, sir. Would you say hello to uh, Steve, Mich uh, Steve uh, Mason? Yes, I will. He's a Toledo boy. I gave him his first job in broadcasting. Oh, really? And do you still work in, in the business, sir? No, I retired last year. I've been 45 years. Okay. Well, have a good evening, and thanks for calling. Thank you. All right. Good night, mm -hmm. sir. Bye. Um, you know Frank Sinatra many years. Yes, I do. And uh, you read the tabloids, what they print, and you yes, see Frank from time to time. What's yes, true, what's not here? The man is uh, holding his own. Okay. He's had some problems health-wise. Sure. But uh, uh, there was some rumor that, uh, God forbid, the last rites and so forth, and gossip, uh, uh, trash papers have made up uh, a, lot of the, a lot of stuff that's certainly not true. He's, uh, uh, he's not in the best of shape, but he's certainly not, he's far from, he still has a quality of life. Let's put Very it that good. way. Okay. And he still uh, chats and talks, and God bless him, and let him go on forever. Okay. You know, when you're 82, you, he's, he's not tap dancing around the house, but... He's holding his own. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, I remember the night that you broke Johnny Carson's cigarette box. Remember, yeah. it, and you pick it up, and then he came back and came out. Yeah, well, it's yeah. A very, you know, he had this favorite cigarette box. Yeah. And, thing. and in those days, it was outrageous, you know, because I didn't think tw twice about it. I went, oh, my God. You know, and I said to the wife, gee, I broke a cigarette box, and that was that. And then he was on the next night, very simple, and he said to the cameras, and he did it as a real joke, but uh, he, really, he yeah. really caught me cold. And he went like, oh, who, who, who did this? Who, who broke the box? And uh, the, uh, Peter, your producer, LaSalle, and Freddie DeCovita, God bless him, uh, they all said, hey, you know, uh, Rickles. He said, yeah, Rickles oh, where is he now? He says he's doing CPO shocking. Oh, next right door. across the hall. Yeah. Studio, yeah. So he took the cameras, walked in, and I was in the middle of a scene in CPO shocking, yeah. and he walked in and said, what? <laughs> why? <laughs> and I went, ah, ah, what? Why? Why? Why did you break this? It's very expensive. And he caught me cold. Yeah, yeah. The old and then uh, you, were, you were starting to tell me a story tonight over at the hotel about the last time you were on with my friend uh, Letterman. Oh, David. Yeah, yeah God, but he's something else. Yeah. He's uh, yeah. your friend, my friend. <clears throat> what happened was that I opened up a magazine. In this magazine, uh, it said, David Letterman had the best time with Peter LaSalle, your producer, mm -hmm. my friend, your friend. And he uh, and Bob Morton at the time, and they, they came to Vegas, and they had, by accident, they came to the dressing room after the show, and we had dinner. Right. 
And uh, David is a very, uh, I can say this, is a very, pretty much of a loner. He's yep, a private <clears throat> man. Yeah. And <clears throat> you don't see him in, like he's in New York. You don't see him at 21 no. or Caravan no, or at the. No, he, God bless him. He's, yeah. he's great that way. That's, that's his style. Right. <clears throat> and so I called up his assistant. I said, We're going to be in New York and I'm going to do the show. I said, Bob, my wife said, Well, why don't you call him, Don, and see if he wants to have dinner with us? Yeah. And we called up his, uh, his assistant and said, Hey, ask David if he'd like to have dinner. He said, Absolutely. I said, oh, this is great. I said, well, I'll make a reservation at 21, mm -hmm. which we love. And we go to 21, like we love Le Cirque, you know, there's certain sure, restaurants. Sure. But he loves 21, that's his hangout, yeah. when he does go. And we, we, we turned around and we called up and, and said, fine. We got to New York and he got on and he opened up with his monologue on the show saying, I've never in my life been invited by an actor or an actress to have dinner in 16 years. Nobody ever asked me for dinner. And Rickles invited me. And I was very delighted. Yeah. And then we did a whole thing. We forgot about the notes and we made it fun about the dinner and so forth. And after the show, he said, I'll meet you at 21. And sure enough, we go downstairs to this wonderful room they have down below yeah. and a wine cellar, which was a speakeasy place one, yeah, one time. Yeah, I've been there. I've been oh, you've never seen it. And uh, in fact, Al Capone's gun was in the hall. But uh, I don't know what and, that means. Well, Geraldo Rivera was holding it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what, you know what upset me? What? You topped me. <laughs> I did. Uh, only no, by accident. No, only no, by accident, sir. I'm, I'm hurt. Only, I'll, I'll only, but anyway, so you get out. Why did I think of that? Damn it. Anyway, so uh, getting back, so the whole thing, we walk in, and they had part of his staff there, wine, champagne, caviar. He went for the works, and he said, Don, you're my guest. Oh, so he had a party for he you had and a party. Barbara. And I thought it was so sweet of him. Yeah. And I think that was a lovely gesture. A lot of people don't know that side of Letterman. And, and then he proceeded to ask about my life, and we had laughs. Yeah. And we all enjoyed it. Yeah. And the wife kept saying, I'll have a little more ice. <laughs> <laughs> she does that. She's the one, when Frank Sinatra had a bad mood, you know, yeah. and Frank would take a glass and go, bang! And in the old days, when he'd get really steamed, yeah. and I'd say, did you see what Frank did? And she said, can I have a little more ice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping with a value. <laughs> I love you, Mr. Rickles. Have a great. Uh, I love you too. Uh, have a great New Year, and uh, Don will be at uh, Harris and Lake Tahoe. If Elliot Weissman lets me. Yeah, uh, the 15th, the 16th through the 18th, and then to your uh, your uh, stomping grounds in Las Vegas, the Desert in the 23rd through the 25th. And Frank McCord is coming out now. If the IRA, go ahead. And I want to tell you something. The IRA is the best in the world. And whether you be a Catholic or a Protestant, we're all working for one cause: to live in the Bronx. <laughs> Back with Frank McCord and you after the Frank break. McCord, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, okay. Don Rickles is always a very busy man. Starting tomorrow, you'll hear Don's voice in the new animated film called Quest for Camelot. On June 5th, he appears in a brand new motion picture called Dirty Work, and he'll be headlining at Harrah's Reno May 21st through May 24th. And it's always a pleasure to welcome Don to CBS. And thanks for coming over, especially tonight, because this is strictly between you and me. You can say anything you want tonight, and nobody will, nobody will know. I don't think that. You really don't. I think I'm important, and you're certainly important. Yes, I am. I mean, the world doesn't get off. Jerry Seinfeld is wonderful. The show is wonderful. But I know a few people that say, I don't want to watch that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and those that watch us will fall in love with us, because you and I are, are Charlie Dynamite. Adorable. Adorable. Hello, America. <laughs> I mean, don't worry about it. I, I want to I call you Grandpa Donnie. You're going to be a grandpa, aren't you? Yeah, do you believe it? Yeah, I do. And all I wear, when my daughter told me, I said, if the kid gets one spot on the pants, I walk. <laughs> <laughs> that, is my, that is my biggest worry, that the kid's going to go, Dad, Grandpa, boom, and a little mustard on the no, pants. No, so what do and you I gotta care? And i got to punch the kid out. Ah, I mean, so what do you care? You know, I've had a granddaughter for eight years now, and you're in for the greatest treat of your life. They tell me that. Oh, it's Meanwhile, wonderful. I took eight Valium, and I'm laying down a lot. <laughs> When did you get the news? <laughs> well, she called, and uh, I, I, I had a hint about it, but uh, we didn't know for sure. It, it all happened. She, uh, she, uh, she, she told her mother. Most, most of course, the mother. Of course. And my wife said, don't say anything, but Mindy is. Mm -hmm. And I thought Mindy had a twitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, she did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, her husband had you know, he made a move one night, and bango. Anyway, so now uh, it came back to me. I don't know exactly how it happened, but I knew. And it's funny. I didn't react the way I thought I'd react. You know, a lot of people come up to me and they go, hey, Don, you're going to be a grandpa. Yeah. And you know, Tom, and I, and I love my daughter. She's a wonderful kid. But I wasn't like, I was like, yeah, great. Uh, in other words, I, it hasn't really you sunk know, in, right? Yeah. Till the kid's in the room with a spoon going, wah, you know, <laughs> and the farina's on the pants. 
When that little kid, boy or girl, smiles at you the first time, you will melt like butter in a frying pan. They, oh, they are so good. They're so good. And the great the money thing, I got to come up with. Yeah, but the great thing about the grand and good you got it, huh? Yeah, yeah. But the you great thing. But, yes. <laughs> we always check before people come on. Yeah. And the great thing about a grandchild is when you absolutely can't stand the kid anymore, with the butter on the pants or whatever you say to her mother, or your daughter. Get her out of here. Mm -hmm. That you take her home, mm -hmm. and you and Barbara have a nice. Day. Now, all said and done, it's, uh, and I got late, uh, married late in life, and uh, I was 38. You know, hunting, searching. You know, I felt like I was on safari. You know, and I kept wandering around with, you know, going, Psst, little girl. And finally, I met my wonderful wife. So I was 38 years old. So now to be a grandfather at this stage of life, you know, it's it's great. it's a bonus. It's it really a great is. bonus. It really is. You know, we were in New York doing the show a couple of weeks ago. And I, all of us have favorites there. All of us who went back have favorite places to go to eat and to drink and whatever. What were your favorites when you lived and worked in, in, in well, New York? Well, which I think you know, Tom, because you were around in those days. Danny's Hideaway. Oh, that was sure, the place where sure. Danny took care of all the actors. Yeah. All the actors. I mean, you come, he used to come to the Copa when I worked in the Copa Cabana. And he used to bring a table for every actor, your opening night, all 20, 30 people. And sit right in the front, and you say good evening. Ah, terrific! Yeah. And Danny's hideaway always comped the check, and I wasn't looking for that. But in those days, he was the most gracious host. And Danny's hideaway was the was was New York. That oh, was it was the hot. Thing. It, it was New York, uh, late night, you know, yeah. supper. That's that, that absolutely. That sort of thing. And you and Barbara were married in New York, were you not? It, no, we were married in Brooklyn. Or Brooklyn. Well, that's Ocean New York. Parkway, and it was uh, my my manager at the time was a fellow called Joe Scandori, uh, Mr. Saul. And he we had this uh, wedding in Brooklyn, and we had all Italians on one side and all the Jews on the other. <laughs> And the Italians come up with uh, bags of money, and the Jews came up with a tie. And so uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful arrangement, and I couldn't say anything because I didn't want to start my car and have problems. Yeah. So, and in those days, they all came to the wedding and went, oh, I wish you luck. They all talked like they were horse. Yeah, right. I don't know why, you know. <laughs> Gunpowder was slipping over the lip. Yeah. You know? But I pretended everything was normal, you know. But I had all those kind of guys. You, you mentioned a name, and I know this man uh, when he worked with you, Joe Scandori, yeah. rest his soul. He'd always say, you know, Don would be happy to come on. You know, yeah. he had that high-pitched yeah. voice. He was such a cute guy. He's an Italian puppet. How did you find him? Huh? How did you find Joe Scandori, your manager? <laughs> it was during a bank robbery. <laughs> 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 no, I found him. He, he saw me a long time ago at a place called the Elegant. Now my manager is Elliot Weissman, who was a good friend of Joe's. Mm -hmm. And when I do that all the time, I go, how are you, sweetheart? You know, he falls on the floor. <laughs> And that's the way Joe talked, as you did. You know, Joe was known for that. Yeah, yeah. He was a, quite a man. But uh, L.A. Weissman now is my manager, and we're very happy. And uh, I miss Joe for his great sense of humor. Yeah, he was a funny, humor. funny guy. Anyway. Now, when you played the Copa, who was in the house? What kind of a crowd would come in there when you played the Copa back then? You ever hear Joey Gallo? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Hold it down, huh? My mother, rest his soul, she was great. Joey Gallo one night said, come on, sit with us. And we sat down at the table, and there were guns around. You know, mm -hmm. in those days, gun. And I said to my, my, to my mother, I said, Mom, these guys got guns. She said, they're wonderful people. <laughs> these are the people that are going to make you a star. <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> a star. star. Did you do that? Yeah, well, my wife does that. They all do that. Oh. Jewish women do that. They're tasting chopped liver while they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, ah. Uh, <laughs> You know, look, at, the, look at how he's cracking himself up. You know what? You're so cute. We have no audience. I mean... I'm a riot. <laughs> You're hot. I have the one, one grip sitting there going, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Dress up, huh? Anyway, guy sitting there with a moose shirt and a dead deer on his lap. Anyway, so uh, uh, these guys were great. And, and those guys, it was, I don't want to use the word mob, you know. It, it, like you saw that movie the other night, you know. That, that yeah, the one on uh, about, about the About Gotti and all. But hey, a lot of, in my day, those men were terrific to me. They, I, I don't mean Gotti in the sense, but the, the whole atmosphere. Those the guys ran the clubs, and they were such gentlemen. Mm -hmm. They really were mm -hmm. to entertainers. And Sinatra would be the first one to say that. Yeah. And poor Frank in those days, you know, they used to pick on him because he would be this guy with that guy. Like, but those are the fellas that were in the nightclubs. Mm -hmm. They ran you the know, clubs. Yes. Exactly right. And Jules Podell, rest his soul. He was the best nightclub owner. You remember Jules Podell. Sure. And he used to sit there and go, I know. And I pretended like I understood him. <laughs> I know. And I went home at night and said to her wife, you want to owl? <laughs> and she went, she went. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need that, Tom. I did it very funny, but we didn't need that. <laughs> Just do what you do best. Interview me and shut up. <laughs> okay. Okay, Tom.
Right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in heat tonight. She's gonna lay there and go, <laughs> find your own dinosaur. <laughs> Ah, he's hot tonight. <laughs> Don Rickles. But you're worried about Seinfeld. Hey, hey, he's got $6 billion. He's sitting in New York chasing that, uh, that young girl, and uh, that's it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Don't worry about we're, him. We're here and we're hot. Right. right. Don Rickles will be at Harris in Reno on May the 21st. And by 20... the way, yes. touring all summer with Joan Rivers. Touring all summer with the one, the only. She's the, the greatest. The inimitable. I'm delighted to share Joan the stage. Rivers. Right. Now, we, she opened for you, is that? We don't have her open for We We share the, the billing and so forth. Yeah. Some nights I open, some nights she opens, and boom, we, we alternate, you know. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and she's great because she's got a wonderful life. She's got a lot of jewelry, tons of money, and there's no problem. I just keep running after her car saying, drop something on the highway. <laughs> just drop a few bucks. She's a wonderful girl. I'm Back with Don Rickles uh, after these messages. <laughs> Uh, with Don Rickles, here's our friend Mindy in Levittown, Pennsylvania. Hi, Mindy, and welcome to CBS Late Night. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mindy. Hi, Don. Hi, Mindy. You got my daughter's name. Well, she has your name, Mindy. Um, well, how old is she? Seventy-five. <laughs> <laughs> no, Why? Just... You from immigration? Why, what does the matter? No, she's... I just a... wondered who was older. Um, I actually, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, how, did you have a good time on your honeymoon? <laughs> what are Why, you did you hear something? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, they did yeah. Hey, 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 I rolled over a couple of times, but I had a good time. <laughs> My wife, when I made love to her on the wedding night, she was, we always make up different things. Even when you're married a long time, you just can't make love one, two, three. Uh, the other night, she was a barge in the Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> And I was the captain, Cap going, captain uh, in. hitting captain. the dock. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, do, you, do you remember, um, uh, do you remember, can you hear me? Snap out of it, huh? No, okay. Go ahead. Do you, do you remember Lou Krauss from the Latin Casino? Yes, I do. Yeah. The I, orchestra leader. Right. Right. He, I, when he, he passed away in 85. I, I know that. I called your wife. I was the one that had to call and tell. Really, it was a great moment for me. Uh, yeah, really. No, he was a great man, though. He was. Lou was he, the best. This is the old Latin casino in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. That's right. right? Dave Dushoff. Dave Dushoff. We used to have the little hand curled up. Yeah. He had played in a band before that. Bobby? He had played in a big band before that. and I know that, but I'm not Ralph Edwards. That's the big one. No, it's just that you were very nice back then when that happened, and I've... All these years, I've wanted to be able to say thank you. Well, that's very sweet of you. Thank you, dear. Mindy, thanks for calling and thanks for watching. Oh, you're welcome. And this has really been a big thrill because I've wanted to talk to Mr. Rickles for a very long time. <laughs> now your dream came true. I know. Oh, yeah. are, you, are you and John Rivers going to be appearing in Atlantic City or anything? Uh, not, not in Atlantic City. She don't like the water. Oh, okay. Well, anywhere like within... The... Well, we'll be around the country. You'll find us. Look for the sign. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good, good night, Mindy, and, and thanks for calling. All right, and, and thank you very much. And happy Mother's Day, Mindy. Thank you. Bye bye. I'm not a mother, though. That doesn't make it. Oh, yes, okay. you are. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> make such a thing. Say oh, goodbye to the woman. Yeah, She'll take up the whole show. Talk to me here about a guy that I've heard stories about, Lee Marvin. Oh, you know, you <laughs> well, I've heard from a fellow who does publicity here in town. Lee was a great actor. Yeah. And Lee had a problem with booze. He always did. But this is common knowledge. But he was a marvelous guy. When he was straight, you know, it's like Jekyll and Hyde, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're sitting in Danny's Hyde. I don't know who told you about that. We were well, sitting in Danny's Hyde. I'll, I'll tell you who after the... I'll tell you, there's a, public, a publicist here in town named Jim Mahoney who used to work with, uh, with, uh, oh, yeah. with Lee Marvin I, back in Jim, the Jim, I know well. He, yeah. He's still running after Frank's car. <laughs> Sinatra's car. Wait up, wait up, Frank. Anyway, uh, oh, Jim sits around. He's very Irish. He misses his mouth when he drinks. <laughs> anyway, so uh, he has spilled more than we've. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and he's got about twenty-five kids. Yeah, right. When he's sober, he dive bombs to the wife. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Lee Marvel, we're in Danny's Hideaway one night, and it's after the Copa show, third show. In those days, he did three shows. Mm -hmm. and it's about two thirty in the morning, and my wife, God bless her, is an absolute valiant. I mean, she is. She's a controlled woman. She is terrific. And we're sitting in the restaurant, and behind me at another table is Lee Marvin. The place is closed. Danny has the doors closed. And I'm saying to Danny, I said, I'll have the salad and what have you, veal and pasta. And we're eating. And Barbara says, listen, behind you, it's Lee Marvin. Don't turn around. Because I think he's feeling good. Don't say nothing. <laughs> and I go, so what, what, is, what, is it, what does that mean? She said, 
And I hear behind me, and I said, what, 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 what is he doing? She said, he's doing karate chops. <laughs> karate chops? Oh, chance? yes. Well, he was a Marine, wasn't he? No, he yeah. kid. He walked around with a bayonet in his pants. Yeah. Anyway, so he was doing, and I was sitting there going, I said, just relax, sweetheart. I'm in charge. There's no problem. She said, he looks a little treacherous. This could be a problem. With that, he comes over to the table. And as you and I are leaning over, and he sits down. And I know Lee a long time. And he sits down, and he goes, <laughs> And I'm eating. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I'm... And the wife's going, would you care for tomatoes? <laughs> I said, what is wrong with you? I said, this man is out of control. She said, well, what are we going to do? She said, don't worry. I said, I have a butter knife under the table. If God forbid he gets crazy, I got him covered. <laughs> With that, she said, are you really relaxed? Now, this is after five minutes of conversation. I said, yes. She said, well, I don't know how to tell you this. Are you enjoying your spinach? I said, absolutely. She said, well, you've been eating his cigarettes. Oh, he's putting, he's putting, putting into the spinach, and I'm going. <laughs> I ate seven pounds of tobacco and a little spinach. That's a true story. We have all seen you with Johnny Carson over the years. But talk to me here about the time when you and Carson uh, were both playing, I believe, Harris in uh, no, uh, the Sahara. The Sahara Las in Vegas. Las Vegas. Right. And he was playing one room and you were playing right. the other at right. the time. Did, did you ever bump into him when you bump not into on, him? Yeah, not, on, not on television. You know? No, he used to sit down at the end of the bar on my last show at 3 in the morning. Uh, and my joke is, you know, I make fun of people. And I'd oh, say, yeah. there's, a, there's a black gentleman sitting there, and that black gentleman, blah, blah. And Carson would get up from the bar and go, where, 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 where's the black gentleman? Show me where the black gentleman is. I was making it up. There was no black gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say, the Italian guy, where? Show me the Italian guy. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And he would do that because he liked to, you know, in those days, Hit the ginger ale pretty good, yeah. too. You know. Johnny enjoyed a cocktail now and again. <laughs> really? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I know. Once my house wasn't there. Anyway, but he, he, was, he was a wonderful artist, as we all know. Oh, sure. And he loved to have fun. He really did. We, he used to hang out. And, and I was very flattered because he used to come and see me at, um, at like 5 in the morning. We had shows in those days, 5 in the morning. Yeah. And he would come and sit at the end of the bar, you know, and really give me the jazz. But he, he was fun. He was always fun. Of all the people you've been on the air with, you know, as a guest, would he be your favorite host? Did he treat you the best? Well, in fairness to, to David, who I adore, Letterman, and Jay, of course, sure. you know, and Larry King, all the, all the talk guys, and of course, Hugh, you yeah, know. Well, well, no, you, you know the two things I like best about Larry King? What? His face. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have cataracts? <laughs> and cataracts, some, I said that to a black guy once, he said, that's a sailboat. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, ah. Now, that's don't a, send me letters for No, laugh, that's for, a joke. They know anything. that. For God's sake, anybody with any brains knows that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, uh, I must say that the, uh, the thing about Carson, he had a, you know, there was only one Carson. Of course. Jack Parr, who I never had the pleasure of working with him just once in my life, in my career. He was always wonderful, too. I was in Florida. I was an unknown guy, and I came on as a taxi driver. I'll never forget that with Jack Parr. I said, you're a moron or an idiot. And he said, who are you? Get out of here. The man didn't know who I was and didn't care. Yeah. And I don't blame him because I was, I was very brash in those days. And he was, but we became friends over the years, and he's a wonderful gentleman. I, I always loved his work. But Johnny had a, because I was on with him, he always left it open to Tom. Yeah, there was, yeah. He always left the space so that you could be funny. Always left that space. Yeah. And he always made you look good. He was never out to top you. He was out to make you look good. As, as David, who I adore, Letterman, you know. Oh. And, and, and Letterman, but they're different. Apples and oranges. Of you course, know, it's of a course. different world now. Yeah. We're with Don Rickles, who will be in uh, Quest for uh, Camelot. Uh, as a as a voice, then uh, Dirty Work opens on the fifth of June. And in the meantime, uh, uh, Don and Joan Rivers will be at uh, Harrah's and Reno on May the twenty fifth. No, Joan Rivers won't be me. Joan Rivers will not be. With She'll Don. be touring with me around the country. country. I'll be at Harrah's by myself. By, by yourself, right. <laughs> sitting in the room with peanuts, trying to hit the maid. <laughs> <sighs>
You certainly have a varied schedule, don't you? Ah, uh, yeah, you're I'm busy. I don't want himself. to sit here every night and talk to the lamps. <laughs> 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 like you do, you know. You, but you, hey, that's why you, you're going to take... Oh, by the way, good luck. I understand you're leaving in about six years. Good luck. I just want to be the first to say bye-bye. Back with Don and you on the toll-free as time permits after this brief timeout. <laughs> Back with Don Rickles. Here's Teal on the toll-free in Riverdale, New York. Hi, Teal. You're on the air. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mr. Rickles. How are Hi, you Dick. tonight? Hi, Teal. Um, I understand you visited the White House several times. Um, what That's is your favorite memory about that? Well, I think uh, uh, the White House itself was with uh, George and Barbara Bush. Uh, mm -hmm. The president was wonderful to me. I was there with Ronald Reagan, and I had that pleasure. And, uh, and then I did the inaugural with Sinatra for Ronald Reagan, which was wonderful. But the White House itself, uh, I was, they invited me to be for, for the Israeli embassy to come to a dinner. But unfortunately, we couldn't make it at that time. So I wound up with the, uh, with the uh, Tunisia delegation, and they all came with sheets and rifles. <laughs> <laughs> and like a dumbbell, I wore my armband. So, uh, so it was kind of hectic. But uh, that was an exciting time, and I leaned over to Mrs. Bush and said, I think I could get knocked off. She said, don't be ridiculous. I said, well, there's one guy staring at me. Anyway, so it was fun, though. It was a great treat to be at the White House. And all the guys next to me kept going, Boom. As they were laying there on the floor, they threw sand on the floor so they'd relax. Uh -huh. He liked it a lot, Teal. Oh, I'm sure he did. We've actually met. Really? Rickles and I. Yes, <laughs> in cool that I, City. I have a family. You asked me what my name was. Uh, you were on stage one night. Oh, and, really? Uh, you said that uh, my parents must have wanted to make me feel miserable the rest of my life and give me a weird name. It was very funny. Yeah, thank very you, Teal. Funny. And I, I enjoyed you very much. And, you. Tom, we're going to miss you a whole lot. Thanks, Teal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, bye-bye bye now. Bye. Be, be in touch. I've never asked you about the time that you worked, uh, you were studying at the American Academy for Dramatic Arts. Right. And you were there with some rather notable names. You studied with Anne Bancroft, yeah. Yeah, and you studied with, uh, with uh, Jason Robards, yeah. Grace Kelly. Did you want to be a serious actor? Tom Poston, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, uh, you know, I thought my, my mother, again, she was a great woman. She was a big, I, I said this to you before, she was a Jewish pattern. Mm -hmm. And she got up in the morning with a helmet and with a whip and... She kept me going. She really... Don? And she said, you know, Don, it would be good to have that kind of background. And Don Rickles, with my image, I went to the American Academy and you had to audition. And I was very fortunate to be accepted. I was, I was delighted. And I spent two years there and I learned a great deal. Uh, well, when you were there, they, they, they did things, which is my favorite thing. They said, today you're a tree in the wind, which is one of my favorite things to do. And I would just stand. And we used to go to the Carnegie Bar across the street and have a couple of vodkas before we did that class. And so when I came in, I was going, ooh, I'm a tree. Ooh. And I'd start spitting up leaves, you know. And I was an idiot. Were you a fast ad libber and a, you know, a, a guy fast with it? With, with, you know what? The way we're leaning away, I think the two of us are in the bathroom. No, no, no. But you know what I, you know what I mean? <laughs> were, were you glib then? Was it hard for you to keep your mouth shut in the acting classes? Were you impatient with it a little bit? No, no. Quite the contrary. I was scared to death. Oh, yeah? And I wanted to do well. And I used to be a kind of an actor that they say ate the scenery. When they said roll them, like uh, even in Casino, when we did Casino, Robert mm -hmm. De Niro would say, I don't know, where's the gun? Do we get the gun? Get I said, the gun's over here! Yeah. yeah. And everybody left. Because I was always overpowering. Yeah. And Scorsese was great, of course, and they always kept me in control. But I always had that, that's from the stage, from being the stand-up, always with that power, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, when I was in the, in the academy, they kept saying, oh, boy, the guy's going to eat the scenery. Which I never really did. But they were on top of me all the time. And it was a great, hey, it's good to have a background. Oh, no question, no question. And that was a great I just wonder if you, if you, because I know that when you're on stage, not that you're impatient, but you move quickly from one subject to the next. And I wonder if the discipline of, of, of stage work or movie work would be tough for you. Because you're always going 100 miles ahead of the crowd. Well, when you do movies, it's, it's apples and oranges. You know, it's, yeah. it's a whole different ball game. But still, that, that stage training and that American Academy background did me did me good, did me very good uh, in my career. It, it was a big help. What about when you worked with Donald Sutherland? It was, what was it, Kelly's Heroes? Kelly's Heroes. It's become a cult uh, a picture yeah, now. Yeah, it is. Clint Eastwood. Nick at Eastwood. Night, I didn't stand, I run it quite Eastwood a bit. was in that picture? Yeah, Clint Eastwood, yeah, who I carried. 
And uh, <laughs> Telly Savalas, yeah, Tell it, tell it. He was. Oh, he a, was a special guy. Yeah. Tell it, rest his soul. He was great. Loved and, to play and, games. And, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he always had the cape, and he was always with the broads. Yeah. Touch a Telly. That's what he said. And Clint was great. You know, Clint's idea of a tip was a picture of himself. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he said, "Do you want, do you want it? Good luck, Clint, or just?" But he, he was great. And I said, "I want to live the way." When I went there, I never forget it. We went over to Yugoslavia. My wife and I, and my my daughter Mindy, who now is going to have the baby, mm -hmm. was a little Grandpa, baby, Grandpa Don, little, little 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 tiny thing. And we went over, and we said, uh, "They said, what do you want, Don?" I said, "Well, MGM." I said, "I like to live the way Clint Eastwood lives. He's the star of the movie." That I know Clint Eastwood, to him, heaven is a pickup truck and a dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. With a, with a hunting rifle and, yeah. you know, sitting. So, yeah, a couple and of we, shovels. We lived, yeah. we lived in, a, in, in a shack. I had, a, I had a move. I said, what is this? Clint said, isn't this great? Look, at, look what I got. And he had like a, like a closet with, the, with dead beaver on the wall, you know. Yeah. To him, that's heaven, you know. But he didn't, have a, he didn't have a worry in those days. He was, he was Mr. Dynamite, you know. All the women looked at him. He mm -hmm. was happily married at the time. And now you know his career. He's, he's a commuter. Yeah, in a shambles, as it yeah. were. Yeah. Yeah. Runs from one altar to the other. You know, the last time uh, that George Siegel was here, a couple of weeks ago, mm. he was so thrilled. He was great. He, he was so thrilled that he, he and uh, Richard Benjamin had come to see your show, yeah. and then I guess visited you in the dressing room right. afterwards. And I thought the show, well, he was on the show here, I thought he was going to talk about it. Yeah, so did I. He forgot about it. He, no, 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 he passed it's it. over. Yeah. Yeah. Take a cab. Yeah. We don't need Rick yeah, Just He just passed well, it. Yeah. Got him comp, boom, in a dressing room, like an equal. Uh -huh. Treated him and Dick great. Never mentioned it to you. Boom. Just I was up there, boom. Then he went on with his career. With his banjo and who cares. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where's he going? You know what I mean? If there's a riverboat, I think he could get hot again. You, you, told, you told me earlier, and we all know, you got married late in life. 38, 39 30, years old. Yeah. Uh, did you... Uh, Put the covers over my head a lot alone at night. Well, no, I was going to say, you know, Letterman used a line the other night with uh, Warren Beatty that Beatty gave a whole new meaning to the word single. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. How, how, how were you single? Were you active with the ladies? Did you, no, I, you know, they all felt sorry for me. I was, certainly wasn't a lover. Look at me. I was never a lover. Yeah, I understand. But, when but there's, day, such a thing as, there's, such, there's such a thing as mercy, you know? <laughs> I didn't need that. Okay. <laughs> we were doing fine until you opened up that Irish mouth with the mercy thing. <laughs> and that's a kick. You're going to pay for that, too. But I got to tell you, I know I was, I was the kind of guy, even as a young man, when I was a young man, women were afraid of me. I mean, girls even out of, right out of high school and then on to when I was a serviceman, when I was in the Navy as a young sailor, they were all afraid because I was always doing the jokes. And they mm -hmm. said, if we make love with this guy, he's going to, you yeah, know, yeah, get yeah, on a speaker. Make a joke. Oh, I, he did it, you know. And I, and I really just, for my insecurities, that's what kept me going, yeah. to be the class clown, so to speak. Yeah. Even in, in the American Academy, even in movies or wherever I work, I always think there's, there's a good time to throw in a few laughs. I mean, yeah. you know. And so that's what I did. So women used to step back. But I always, I always on the road, I always worked with the singer. And somehow the singer and I always worked something out that I would do a tune at their place, and then they would do a tune at mine. Gotcha. And then we'd make it harmony night. <laughs> My best to your family, sir. Thank you very uh, much. I hope that your grandchild is a joy to you, and I hope to see you oh, again when the, when the Joan Rivers tour is underway. The Joan Rivers. The, jo right. the Joan Rivers, uh, Don Rickles, Joan Rivers right. victory or tour. Joan Rivers, Don Rickles, no matter. Yeah, the victory tour, as it's called. Right. Don uh, can be seen in uh, Dirty Work starting on June the 5th. Don appears by himself as a major star <laughs> at Harrah's in Reno, May 21st to 24th. And then the victory tour with, victory Joan, tour Rivers, with, Joan, with Rivers. Joan Rivers. Through and then on the side, I visit Barb Newhart's house and tell him how great he is. That, that's correct. Just to relax <laughs> yeah. him. Exactly. Next, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the scandal that rocked the FBI in, in Boston after these messages. <laughs>